All right, folks, I'm back. I'm sorry I've been every other day this week, but I've um, I got a <clears throat> family member in the hospital. It's nothing, you know, they're fine. But I just I've been going to the hospital every day, uh, visiting them, and so I haven't had time to record anything when I get back at the end of the day. But today I am back early enough, and you know, I hate that I'm you know not here enough when we've got such an exciting week <laughs> with the former president being indicted now. Uh, for the Jan the January 6th debacle. Uh, he has now been arraigned. He just about a half hour ago pled not guilty. I know that came as a big shock to everyone. People were thinking, gee, was he going to take the plea deal? Uh, not that they even offered him one. Why would they offer Trump a plea deal? You know, the only punishment uh, that is suitable for Trump's crimes is life in prison. We all know that. So that's kind of what I want to discuss today. Uh, it's something that I think that most Trump supporters just don't acknowledge, and they get very upset if you do acknowledge it. And I brought it up. I'm not the only person who's brought it up. Um, <clears throat> now, the DeSantis people bring it up a lot, uh, you know, like strong DeSantis supporters, and I think that's partially why uh, Trump supporters are so defensive about it. But, you know, really, I have I don't really have a, a super strong preference in the DeSantis versus Trump war. I think that they both have their um, their reasons that they, you know, not to trust them and reasons to trust them. You know, they have their merits and demerits, each one of them. So I'm not coming from uh, carrying water for either one of them. But it is something to consider. What happens when they put Trump away? Because I think that's, it's pretty clear at this point, that's their goal. By hook or by crook. They want Trump to be put away forever. And this is not without precedent because they've done it in other countries. It's actually quite common. The current president of Brazil, just a few years ago, was in prison in Brazil. He was eventually let out when the political tides turned against Bolsonaro. Then they said, you know what, let's let Lula out of prison so he can beat Bolsonaro. And then they let him out and you know, Lula beat Bolsonaro. And now Brazil has been trying to persecute Bolsonaro. And so Bolsonaro, I, I think, is now living in Orlando or, or maybe Miami. But Trump, interestingly enough, is not taking the usual approach to, um, of a persecuted former leader. Um, he has not flown the coop. He is not, uh, you know, staying at some chalet in Switzerland. He has not fled to Russia. Instead, he's... You know, he's facing all this head on. He's shown up at every single one of these hearings at all these different states for all of these trials and charges. And I don't I don't know how that's going to work out for him. I can't see it making things. I can't see it leading to him being free, I'll say that way. But from what I understand, the the strategy here is just to go through all these trials you know, let them lynch him, let them throw the maximum sentence, let them sentence him to what is it now that he's potentially facing 536 years in prison, um, uh, you know, in in uh, consecutive sentences. I mean, come on. So the hope is that, you know, if he appeals up to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, which is now a, you know, Republican majority, thanks to Donald Trump, uh, will obviously overturn these convictions and free him or he will win the election from prison and he will then be able to pardon himself at least for the federal charges but not the state charges he won't be able to pardon and then he would have to you know rely on governors to pardon him i don't think the governor of new york would pardon him um and the governor of georgia even if and it's questionable of whether Brian Kemp would even want to pardon Trump. Even if he did want to, uh, it is Georgia is one of these stupid states that has given up um, uh, the pardon power. So you essentially, the pardons are handed down by bureaucrats now, not by any elected official. The people have no influence over who gets pardoned in Georgia. And it's just another reason why that is such a shithole state. And so like I said, one way or the other, they're locking this guy up, and I don't relish that. I'm not going to act like um, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to laugh at him. You know, this isn't funny. They're destroying this guy's life um, 
for only because of the good things that he did. Trump is not being punished for any of the bad things that he did. Nothing that I don't like about Trump um, is has contributed to why he is being persecuted this way. Trump is being persecuted because of all the things that you or I might like about him. And so this is about as strong of a message to the rest of us as uh, they could possibly send uh, to get in line, to get with the program. And so if all roads seem to be leading to a bad ending for Donald Trump, what is that? What, what happens to the rest of us? What seems to be the most likely scenario here is that everyone doubles down on supporting Trump um, rightfully, you know, because you know, he, they're making a martyr out of him. And so people are going to say, you know what, um, that makes me support him 10 times more. I, I think that's a perfectly reasonable reaction to what's going on. However, once he's in prison, um, once they strip him from the ballot in the swing states that I've talked about, Even if Trump supporters turned out to vote for him, to write his name in, he can't win. I mean, technically, he could win on a write-in, even if his name was stricken from the ballot. Pretty sure write-in votes still count. Um, however, you know, nobody's, they're not gonna, you're not going to win a swing state on a write-in campaign. I don't know, maybe they could, maybe it's possible. I guess I, I guess I shouldn't I, I should never say never, but that is you know that's like uh, three hail marys and a, and a, a two and a half two point conversions. You know it's like is there technically enough time on the clock if we pull that off to win? Yeah, yeah. There's enough time on the clock. We've got over a year until uh, the 2024 election. But we're not just talking about the star player being benched. This isn't just your first, second, uh, and even third string quarterbacks on the bench. This is the whole team. That's what a presidential candidate is at the end of the day. He's the whole team. Um, at least he's all the players on the field. Are there other people behind the scenes who make, you know, who make everything happen? Obviously, there's very, there's lots of people in a campaign, just like there's lots of people in a, I can't believe I'm using a sports analogy. God, like, what is, what is, what have I become? But anyway, obviously, you've got lots of people behind the scenes who make the game happen who aren't on the field. But if, if there's nobody on the field, repping your side, you got no players, guess what? You're going to lose the game. And so at that point, what happens? Trump is stuck in prison for at least four years. Biden gets his second term, likely dies in office, <clears throat> will be replaced. <coughs> They'll probably find a way to get rid of Kamala Harris. Excuse me for coughing, by the way. Um, I should have hit the cough button. Uh, Kamala Harris, they might find a way to finagle her out of there. Maybe, you know, they've got a, a few more years ahead. They'll, they maybe they'll find some Democrat rising star they want to put in their place so that when Biden finally kicks the bucket, um, you know, they have their, their new candidate in place. And, you know, let's hope beyond hopes that maybe uh, there's a decent Republican somehow in 2028 who ends up beating this person who replaces Joe Biden. And then once a new Republican president is in, they're able to pardon Trump. How old is Trump by then? I mean, isn't he like 74 now? You know, the guy will be pushing 80. I mean, can Trump do four years in prison? I don't know. He's he's pretty tough. He seems to be very hardy. But I think that I think that takes a toll on you. If you're in your 70s and you get sent to prison, and you know they're not going to put him in a safe prison. You know, he's not going to be. You know, they're going to throw him into, into general population. And he's going to get assassinated, probably. And you can say, oh, well, the Secret Service, they'll protect him. Eh, okay. But uh, if Trump is hated so much that they uh, they end up letting him go to prison anyway on these ridiculous charges, you think they're going to protect him on the inside? You think they're really going to go out of their way? I don't know. I find it hard to believe. I just think that there is a – that if Trump gets put away – it's almost certain that, uh, the, that the Republicans will lose the 2024 election because 
uh, people are going to boycott the the election if Trump is not a, a candidate. If Trump is not on the ballot, people are going to boycott. And so Biden will win, no matter who the Republican nominee is. And the end result will be that Trump will have to make it four years at the very least in prison, maybe eight. It might be that by the time there is a new Republican president who can pardon Trump, and I guarantee you the whole time that he's in prison, this will be a big issue. This will be like one of the top talking points for Republican presidential candidates. They'll say, and well, I'm going to pardon Donald Trump. They're all going to say it. So I'm just calling that ahead of time. By the time that someone actually gets into pardon Trump, he might not be alive anymore. And they might have to just, you know, expunge his record. They'll have to take a, you know, federal convict off of his gravestone. But that won't save him. And so the, the saving grace, the only th option that people really, I think, are leaning on now, other than just saying, oh, well, you know, Trump, he's Teflon Don. They won't take him down. They can't take him down. You know, he's too good. You know, trust the plan. That's essentially what, what I see a lot. I see a lot of plan trusters on the Trump side these days. Imagine that. But, you know, there is the Supreme Court. People also thought that the Supreme Court might intervene in the 2020 election because of all the election laws that were broken. They said, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous interpretations of the law. These people you know, clearly committed uh, election fraud in certain states. These are illegal ballots at the very least. Um, you know, they were, there was no signature match check. You know, all of this, was, you know, they changed election laws um, uh, unilaterally. Well, guess what? The Supreme Court did nothing. You think the Supreme Court is going to take up this case? My guess is the Supreme Court is going to hawk it. Kavanaugh, Barrett, Roberts. You think they you think they're going to want to adjudicate this issue? Mm -mm -mm. No, they're not touching it. They already got, you know, Kavanaugh and and Barrett, they got their their Supreme Court seats. They don't need Trump anymore. Trump's no use to them. And so they might be happy to let him run. Um and so this is a problem that needs to be dealt with. I'll keep talking about it. Um, I will keep exploring the idea, trying to come up with, you know, hey, are there, is there anything that makes more sense? Is there any other outcome? And, you know, and for his sake and for our country's sake, I hope there is. So with that said, I will do my best to see folks back here tomorrow. Um, but I, again, this is a bit of an unstable week. So, so there.